I think what you served is this objective space that is powerful and um, knowledgeable and uh, caring and compassionate, uh, a really strong listener for someone who is um, needing direction at that time and needing to access the inner voice without, you know, so much mental process goes into what do I want to do next and where do I want to be and what am I supposed to do and how am I going to make money? And while Jared is still very uh, focused on how he's going to make money, um, he has, uh, in his work with you has really helped him to be more uh, aware of himself um, and more in a more holistic way rather than just make um, pragmatic decisions or go with the practical thing to do. Um, all that being said, he really, really, really wants to go in the military, uh, so that he's not doing nothing between when he graduates and when he starts chiropractic school. And I keep saying, uh, I haven't even heard about that. Just take a break. <laughs> so huh. yeah. Um, and that's and just sidebar note like that's really hard for me as a parent right like uh to because i don't well, particularly want with your background that. yeah particularly um, with your perspective and background and viewpoint yeah right and just want to honor him and so um you know this isn't totally a void of the direction of the conversation because he we were spoke we were speaking yesterday and he said you know if it wasn't for my disagreement with with the uh, choices that the United States is, um, you know, interjecting themselves into. If it if I were in agreement with the wars they were fighting, uh, basically, then it would be easier for me to choose that. But because they don't align with me, you know, it's harder for me to to choose that option um, for the sake of receiving uh, a monetary stipend to help me with school which is the underlying reason why. So, you know, I think that that example really speaks to um, something that he gained that was invaluable from spending time with you that I couldn't give him. You know, I feel mm -hmm. like as parents, when, when our kids turn 16, 17, 18 years old, we do not know um, a lot. You know, they look at us and they look at our life and they look at what we've created. Um, a void of all of the snafus that showed up in our in our path, right? That um, that impacted some of the decisions that we made to get us to what our kids can see, right? They have this very limited, tiny lens, and they uh, look at us and um, they don't judge, but they perceive based on their limited experience of adulting, and. You know, I I just think that having that third party, that third person, um, someone that they can really trust, who's an uh, incredible listener, which you are, you're able to really uh, verbalize back. So are you saying X, Y, and Z, right? And hone in on that. And that's a gift that not everybody can do. And um, even with training, it's a gift that not everyone can do and really see the heart and core of someone. And so I think that's something that you've been able to do with Jared is really pull out some of the heart of and soul of him to be able to, uh, you know, um, find greater happiness, live a more expansive life and make decisions uh, I know that's one of the key things that you've helped him with is making decisions. He was paralyzed um, with his decision making, which is an ancestral thing. I'll have you know, my parents can't make decisions, and I'm not. <laughs> it's I, you know, I, I have to learn to get bit yeah. better at it too. So uh, yeah, I don't know if you've noticed that's a human being ancestral thing. Like having a thousand sales calls for Ted, it blew my mind how many people had some kind of amazing gift to give to the world. And then we'd get to the end and they would hem and haw. And it didn't matter if they had the money or didn't have the money for it. It was just all, any reason imaginable came up in, in a thousand calls. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I really think that you've helped him find direction. Um, 
and teach him that it's okay to, you know, no decision is really a wrong decision when you're making it with, um, how could you tell that one? How could you tell like that that was going on? Like no decision's a wrong one. How could I tell that was going on with yeah, Jared? Like, yeah, with with Jarrett and I. How could you how could you see through to that? That's definitely true, but I'm wondering how you could how could how you could spot that. <laughs> well, I I think I know my child. Um uh, you know, from a person, from doing what I do, you know, I, I do what you do all day, only I do it with my hands and, you know, a, a little more woo woo. Uh, but, you know, so I, I do feel like I know him and, um, and I do feel like I, I could see some of the struggles that he was having. And I knew that it was, that I wasn't going to be, I, I wasn't his teacher for it. You know, I, I needed to find somebody else and, you know, and, and honestly, we don't, we didn't have the money. We don't, I don't, I, but I wanted for him so much more than I wanted somebody to see in me, like looking back now, I, I wanted somebody to see in me that if they made an investment in me, I would have been able to change the world, right? And I think that that's what I saw in Jarrett is that this amazing potential. And if I didn't align him with somebody to help him see that potential, um, I would be disappointed in myself. Mm. Um, you know, and I think that parenting is hard and, and I think your customer is a parent who um, wants to get out of the way and let somebody else um, help their child find their magic, you know, find their their thing, right? And um, and I and I think there's something to be said for that because I think our children need to find it themselves, right? They need. Um, it, you know, it's, it doesn't, it's not as rewarding when somebody tells you something as when you go and find it and craft it and build it and pull it together. And I just, um, yeah. So. Yeah. We're really on the same wavelength with that one. Cause that's, uh, well, I, I actually tried, you know, thinking, oh, the parents, you know, you know, everything they're going to say before they say it. Uh, plus you see how they live. But I got everything on a silver platter, I said, as a school counselor. <laughs> and they would basically <laughs> like be like, slap, stop. And then there'd be the shape of a cartoon character teenager out my out my wall when I tried that. And I was like, well, that didn't work. And, uh, you know, it was nice to know the four year high school high school cycle, like the back of my hand. <laughs> but it was like, well, the master's degree didn't do it. The, you know, learning everything they needed to know and telling them doesn't work. Well, what what gives? And so I, I learned it's like Jeopardy, basically like the game Jeopardy, like put it in the form of a question. I know where they should probably go. And, uh, you know, I could tell them where they should go and that doesn't work. But how mm -hmm. about, you know, you ask questions and, you know, sometimes they just need, they need to be brought to a fork. And sometimes it's like the stupidest choice A and the obvious choice B, but they'd rather me not tell them B and sometimes mm -hmm. they will pick the stupid one to mess with me, but <laughs> it just, um, yeah, I learned that one the hard way. But I also, when that happened, it just affirmed for me, like, well, what would I have wanted? I wouldn't want somebody to give me the answers. And like, you can't, you can't give the answers in self-discovery. It's not a thing. Um, so that was, that was definitely something that I had one of those, you know, wake up call moments <laughs> and uh, learned like, okay, that's the way I want to do it from now on. And how do I, you know, steer, steer, give them direction that they find for themselves and let them claim it too. Don't try and say, I, you know, I just did the Jeopardy thing with you and I tricked you. Like <laughs> That wouldn't go over well either. So it would ruin the whole, the whole thing. So yeah, it's, um, yeah, I think that's rare. Both the listening you're talking about, uh, whether you get training for it or not. Uh, there's something about being in the trenches and hearing everything under the sun and seeing everything under the sun and then knowing everything literally about their cycle of these four years doesn't matter. 
So it's like, well, what now? But uh, the what now is like, help you know, foster them discovering it. Help them, you know, steward them through a process so that you're facilitating that discovery. Do you ever use the Clifton Strengths test, the, the Clifton Strengths Finder? I have not used that one, no. No. It's um it's interesting. I had both kids take it. Uh and Savannah took it when she was, I think, 12. And so I'm interested. I'd like her to take it again. But uh, but they it's interesting because they both refer back to it from time to time. And mm -hmm. The whole premise is that you, it, you know, we as a culture and a society, we look at those bottom strengths and we try to strengthen those bottom strengths. But what if we focused on the top 10 strengths and we really, you know, brought those to brought those to um, their excellence? And, and I think that it's, you know, it, I think it's a great uh, tool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that I also look at other students like Jared's friends and I, um, Jared's a pretty private person. You know, I have only met his friends a couple of times, but he'll talk to me now about his friends, which, which is great. And yesterday he was here talking about one of his friends who's getting ready to graduate and, uh, you know, spends hours on TikTok, uh, interestingly. And um, it really has no motivation, has not applied for any jobs, has not no interest in graduate school. Uh, and some of his other friends, uh, you know, they all get straight A's. They're all, you know, he's got a good group of people, but Even they though they're on TikTok, they still get the the good grades. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the, but they're on TikTok. They, uh, you know, some of them are playing video games all day you know there's a couple of them that drink um, a lot you know and and then I look at Jarrett and he's um you know and I wonder sometimes like is it w what happened right what happened because he's eating healthy he's going to the gym every day he's motivated to to work maybe a little too motivated um you know, focused on creating financial wealth and, you know, and I just, um, I couldn't be more proud of him, but, you know, is it, is it Donovan? Is it, uh, you know, is it just the character of who Jared is? Is it, um, you know, I don't know, but I, I can't help but think that coaching hasn't been, um, that coaching has been a major factor for him and, and something that has really strengthened him in, uh, in his ability to adult because it's, you know, adulting is not always the easiest thing in the world to do. No. Right. Yeah. Um, like showing up for an appointment, for example. <laughs> right. Exactly. I got it. I got that down now. No, three. <laughs> Uh, 53, you know what? 53 forward. I, I might have it. Practice. Practice <laughs> makes everybody better. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Well, I think I've, I, I, in my 20 years, if, if a parent would be like too um, casual about their kid turning out well, and, and they just weren't sure if it's character or not, not I would automatically say, pat yourself on the back, <laughs> do like this <laughs> right now. Cause I haven't seen any that that wasn't a factor. And I haven't seen any with serious problems as well, that the, the state of the, um, the state of their nuclear family wasn't the answer there either. So the best and the worst, it was always, you know, always traced back to the nuclear family. And then yes, you know, I would love to enhance what's already there character wise. And, you know, if there's a parent, their, their parents aren't going to invest in anything for their kids if they just don't care. And if I look at, you know, raising my rates to be able to have a viable business, um, you know, to be able to do, to not have to take on a bazillion clients to make it work um, and really do the quality of work I want to do, it's not for everybody. You know, it's, it's gonna have to be for number one, the parent believes in the investment and two, 
uh, I think I have to convey just like the quality of coaching I've developed, like the things that you're talking about feel all like good and warm and fuzzy, but also not like, I'm not shocked either. It's like, that makes sense. All of that makes sense. Um, and so whether we get training, whether we call ourselves a coach, uh, that doesn't mean we're at the, the, at the top of the game, especially for a niche like this in this niche. I only know of like a couple of people in the world that have really, you know, made it work and they're really crushing it with uh, serving teenagers. Um, so it's really not, um, like I said, it's not for everybody. I really want to work with the ones that are high quality character, big values. They want to be a leader. And, uh, you know, it could be as well as other ones that just need direction and better decision making and so on. But if I really dialed into who I feel like I'm most capable of serving it's those kids that really need that extra level to to make sure they go the right direction holistically and uh that they they have some aspirations to be a leader not just of themselves but to put good into the environment i think the karma just goes in <laughs> you can either put in <laughs> bad stuff or good stuff and i really want to help those kids who've been given much actually expect much of themselves and have the lift and support and uh you know the wind beneath their wings to actually be able to pull it off holistically yeah i think the other piece that's really important is that your child could be your child is likely incredible right because we're all yes. incredible but if they don't have the skills um like discipline and courage and self-confidence and you know those qualities and I'll let you come up with your your own adjectives but that um that can help them bring all of that awesomeness out into the world right and I think if if I were to sum it up that is really what you were you were the catalyst to help Jarrett uh, gather up all his pieces and then move in a forward direction continuously to create uh, momentum and and forward movement um, because you know, I think, I think every child deserves a coach and, and needs a coach, right? Like I, I believe that I believe every parent needs a coach. Um, I believe that, uh, our world is so strange and unusual and they are already coming out of high school with so much reality so much fear already um, woven into the, the world that they have to then step into that a coach simply helps them um, organize themselves to get onto a path that's going to help them um, be successful, right? And, and what parent doesn't want that? And I think that it's necessary, not just a luxury, a, necess a necessity, and that's why I invested in it. Um, you know, when my parents who were sitting upstairs the day that we said that I forced him into it and shoved him off the, the cliff um, and thought I was crazy for spending that kind of money, right? Um, so to, to get to your final question, because I do have a client that's expected it too, he, you know, um, I think your your work is priceless. I really do because we're making this investment into our young people who are going to serve the world. And when I look at my son, um, you know, and it's not uh, when I look at my son, I'm like, we're going to be all right. We are going to be all right because I know that there's a group of people out there like him, right? That um, that just are rooted and grounded and in their body. And I think coaching helps with that and as other things, but, you know, I look at him and I think we're going to be all right. And wow. so, um, you know, I personally think that the investment should come from both, both the child and the parent. Um, the first session I paid for myself. Yeah. Um, that second, was, I mean, that's been really amazing to see you know, Jarrett make that decision to keep going. I mean, we've spread it out more and like, that's great. You spread and it out. Thank more. you for that. Yeah. Thank you for making it possible for him. Cause I, I know you've been incredibly generous to him and, um, yeah. and you've worked with pleasure. him and yeah. I, you know, I, um, 
thank you for doing that because you have made uh, a mark in his life. You've made a difference and you've, and, and the, the other thing that you've done is really made coaching, um, not just accessible, but like normal, right? Like when I looked at, when I decided to do uh, coaching, uh, when I was much later in life, right? It was like, oh, should I do this? Should I not do this? You just met my three protectors. So, uh, um, you know, so like, I think that's the other huge gift that we can give the people of that age group is like, it's, it's normal uh, to build a team of support and to have that um, level of uh, support around you. And, and it's normal to make that investment in you. And so, um, I don't know what is the right price. I will say whatever you've chosen is more than likely um, the right price. You yeah. know, I um, I think, um, and I also think that the price has to be high enough that it weeds out the people who are not ready for you, right? Um, because I, I've learned the pricing thing the hard way and, uh, and I probably am still learning. Um, but I think it's just really important that you charge what needs to be charged. And, you know, again, you've been so gracious in working with my son because I feel like he's proven, um, that he's meeting you where you, he needs to meet you for you to do that. Right. And that flexibility that's in the background that you can pull out when you need to and want to um, is, is critical and important. Yeah, I think that's where the school counseling really helped to have that full perspective. And, you know, I mean, really creating creating a way to de demystify the inner world, which is my green, yellow and red philosophy makes like what, what it revealed is exactly what you said is in the section in the middle. It's beyond our ability to do it ourselves. It's not necessary for therapy yet. But in that middle, what we're lacking out there, basically almost to a person, is insufficient support. You know, my coach that I currently write, had right now, she said, I'm always going to be coached up. I was like, I like the sound of that. Everybody should always be coached up. Not only should we get coaching just once, but it should be normal that we do have that support system for the yellow level stuff. I agree. I agree. Well, it's two, but thank you so much. And uh, I, would, I would love to follow up again and, and uh, you know, pick it up from here. And I'd, I'd love to actually have a little conversation about what your business needs, Max. And I'd love, love to gift that to you, not necessarily to have it be a sales conversation, but just in thank you for today for um, just sharing with me. It was like really heartwarming to, to hear you share it all and just heartwarming to think about. It, it's pretty crazy out there. So... <laughs> For you to feel like we're okay, I agree. We are totally okay, and we've got the ability to tap into these, you know, next coming generations with better tools than we've ever had to to pour into them than ever in history. So, despite being things being pretty crazy out there, we can really, I think, do something special for the up and comers. I do too. I think you um, you help them know that we believe in them and that um, they need to believe in them, and you are a gift. And I I really. I appreciate you. Um, I would love to take you up on your offer. I'd love to share more about where I'm at now and um, and continue the conversation. So thank you so awesome. very, very much. Yeah, for sure. Well, All have right. a seen rest of your day, Kara. And uh, thanks again for uh, you know, sharing today. And I might even ask you if there's little clips I could post or if you could say it again, because, oh my gosh, some of the things you said were just like, oh, you can't make yes. up. Uh, you can't make I that. I don't know if I could say it again, but you absolutely <laughs> can cut and yeah, paste. I'll, I'll share it. I'll share it with you Whatever first. you want, audio yeah. and video uh, with with this. No problem at all. Awesome. All right? All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.